Carroll, the voice of billiards, live with Sneaky Pete Mafia, here today with Kelly Quickfire Fisher. Kelly, welcome. Thank you, Jackie. Nice to see you again. And hi, everybody. So tell us, so you've won like tons of national and, and world titles. Have you lost track of how many you won? Like, tell well, I mean, you know, I started when I was very young um, playing snooker. I won, I don't know how many. I have honestly lost track and that's not, it's just with changing uh, disciplines, I suppose. So, yeah, I, I won um, over 50 for sure. And then, um, you know, also some smaller ones as well. Korea, And then I changed to pool and, and you know, I've, I've done, done quite well in that too. So, yeah, I mean... You know, I'm very grateful to have, have had the fortune of, of doing so well and the opportunity to uh, to perform and play well. So, yeah, it's, it's been a great career. I've enjoyed every minute. Very, very good. And congratulations on your recent win. Well, to be honest with you, I mean, I really, I went into the event playing well. I knew I was playing well. I was practicing well. I felt good. Um, did I think I could win it yeah I knew I could win it I know I go into any event knowing I can win otherwise I don't think I would go you know but right. did, I, did I think I would mm, probably not um the reason for that being is just that I had my greatest like my peak if you like in pool I would say 2011 12 13 after that I have numerous surgeries and uh things like that I just I just really never felt that I'd come back after the surgeries uh, to the level I was before the before the surgeries. So although I felt this last year and a half that I've managed to get my game back, I was still waiting for them results. Now, you know, so I went into it kind of thinking I could, if I play well, you know, I can win anything, but I didn't expect. So it was, it was more than, uh, the feeling was, was overwhelming, actually. Um, I really... In the final, before the final, before that's my dog, <laughs> before the final, um, I really, really kind of put a lot of pressure on myself, thinking, you're here now, you've got, please win it, please, you know. Right. Um, so it meant more to me than I realised, uh, possibly one of the greatest moments of my career, really, because I'm over 40. I didn't expect, against all the young Chinese to pull another one off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over 40, you're wiser now. You're even wiser. <laughs> <laughs> so let, so you, you have your dog with you right there? I heard you. <laughs> she's now walked off from me, but I'll grab her, okay? okay. She's a peek a poo okay. She just likes to cuddle all the time. <laughs> she's, um, really she's like a baby, really. If I turn right. up, she'll let me cuddle her like that. So, yeah, she's got a great name. There you go, look. Really a cutie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks a lot like my dog. My dog is, was injured this last weekend, and we went um, out to this private lake, and we were throwing the ball, and she accidentally scratched her eye, so now she's got scratches on her cornea. It feels so bad she's got the cone of shame on. <laughs> she's such a cutie, too. <laughs> the cone. No, no, it's terrible. <laughs> right, I know. So, you, so you've got trophies behind you. Which Are, are they from this most recent win, or are they, what trophies are they from? Okay, well, this trophy here. This is the recent one. This is the world championship one. So this, oh, wow. is, the medal. this is the medal that come with that. Uh, Beautiful. 2019 world championship Beautiful. winner. Beautiful. That's from the WPA and that trophy. Um, this is just another one particular trophy. I like the style of it. It's, it's very heavy. <laughs> and I, yeah, I won that in China, a Chinese CBSA event. Um, uh -huh. I just thought the trophy were cool. And then yeah. this one here is one of my European Championship wins. Um, I've won two. Uh, I've played in two and been, you know, I've, I've only played in two. I managed to win both of them. 2018, and that's by the EPBF, which is a European Pool and Billiard Federation. Um, so that's one of my trophies from the two wins. And then finally, just... Just thought I'd show you a couple of cool ones, you know. Yeah. Um, finally, is this one, but I'm gonna. Oh wow, that is really unique. I like and that. It's very unique, and it's very, it's all metal, and it's very, very heavy. I uh, won that tournament in India, and it was against it was the All India Nine Ball Pool Championships. 
2016, and I won against the um, all against the guys. Actually, I was I was uh, I think I was the only female in it, or maybe the yeah yeah. This one is so heavy that they had to fly it. They had to ship it over to me. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even hold it up in the air for the picture. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are not all my trophies. I have many in America still. But uh -huh. I, and after my uh, I, after I lost my parents, um, I decided to donate a lot of my. They kept all my snooker trophies, and I decided to donate a lot of them to pool halls um, where they could change the badge and have oh, them out wow. at tournaments and things. Oh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, so. These are the ones I've got left, if you like. Um, starting from here, these are the crystal, a couple of, a few of the crystal ones. And then Beautiful. Wow. this is a world championship one. Cool. Uh, yeah, more crystal ones here. And then I have oh, it's just some up here and some down. I've not really tidied it, but, and then I've got, unfortunately, it's sad to say, I've got a box that's down here with some trophies in that I've not yet took out the box. <laughs> so really cool. so well, you started out playing snooker, and now you like pool even even more. Could and you, could you go over just kind of a, the general rules of it? Yeah, sure. Okay. This is a nine foot, this is nine foot uh, Chinese pool table. And okay. Basically, what it is, it's a, it's a nine foot snooker table, basically, in very similar. Okay. Similar, uh, and what I mean by the similarities that we have here mm -hmm. are the, po the pockets. If you take a look here, it's got the rounded cushions. Right, very tough to make a ball. So, yeah. Now, when you've got two balls, if you look, they're nowhere yeah. near. Yeah. No way. What is near. that like? Like uh, three and a half inches? I think it's th three and a half. I think it's three or three and a half. Yeah. It must be. Three and a half, yeah, yeah. So, and the problem is, is they're round. So basically, they do go in, but if you're anywhere out of there, they right. will not. Yeah. So basically, the game that's played on this table is eight ball, hence the Chinese eight ball. So there's major tournaments all around the world playing Chinese eight ball, and um, I've played in the World Championships a couple of times, well, a few times actually, and I've managed to go, I got second place in one, semi-final in another, and then various other results. But yeah, it's a great game, a tough game. And uh, it's it's really good to practice on this table because we've got the same balls, American pool balls. But you right. Know, tight pockets, so it's good for your cueing, you know, for your accuracy. Right, right. Yeah. So do you find that you use left, less left and right when you're uh, playing snooker or Chinese Eight ball? Most definitely, most definitely. Okay. Yeah, you don't use as much spin, and most most of the reason for that is the cloth. The cloth's a napped cloth. I have to always brush it down the way. I can never go up the way. Um, and basically, what it's it's um, it's a thicker cloth, so you really can't use. Well, you can, but you really um, don't use as much spin simply for the accuracy. Of course, to, to miss at all, and the cloth being thicker as well, um, it doesn't take as well. Can you, to be can you tell us a little bit about some of the rules with snooker, and then also the rules with Chinese eight ball? Well, basically, it's right. very very similar to the rules that you already know for eight ball. So there's not much explanation there. Yeah, you break the balls, and it's you know just the same as American eight ball. There's a couple of different rules, I would say. Uh, to be honest with you. As of a few years ago, nobody even really had heard of it much over in the rest of the world, if you like. Right. The rest of the billiard world. So, yeah, everything was held in, um, held in China as far as <laughs> top wise. And this table here is one of my sponsors' table, uh, Jing Zhui. They, okay. uh, yeah, they sponsored it for me and sent it over oh, to me. And if we just look here, where is it? Oh, it's in Chinese, but you'll be able to see there. Uh, one minute. You can see there where they have. <laughs> that's what. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, on on their newer models, because this one I've had for a while now, on their newer models, it says my name, um, and it says world champion. Um, what's it? I forget the the word they use on there, but world champion spokesperson for Jing Zhui, 
and, oh, neat. Sure. and then it's got my signature yeah so it's pretty cool neat. yeah and so who is who is the uh, else is on your shirt there is it fury fury yeah yeah okay fury. like i said in the last interview i've been with fury now so yeah so so you work with a coach and you said you've worked you've worked with this coach um for a long time correct and what was the name again of the of your coach? His, name's, his name's lionel Payne. okay how did you guys meet and, and does he play a lot of pool he, he doesn't really play much pool at all to be honest with you um, yeah that's a funny thing that misconception people seem to have with coaches like you know what i mean a lot of times they don't play a lot right i mean it's not necessary yet yeah. Correct. Somebody, like I said before, you know, you can be a great player but not a great coach, and you can sure. also be a great coach but not a great player. Sure. And it's, it's about knowledge and and about how you your ability to teach and help people learn. Uh, no, he's a fantastic coach, um, like a best friend, like a family member now, and uh, he knows me inside out probably better than myself for some things. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, we, we just uh, get on so you, you mentioned you have a, a book where you keep track of your progress can, uh -huh. and, uh, or, you know, your routine. And do you have that around that we can I just do. look at it? I do. And then I'll show you the snooker rules after that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. This is my book. That was obviously my nickname. And I had a line of cues with quick fire that I brought. This is just where I keep a record of things. And uh, right, so here I have... Uh, all different kinds of drills that I've written out and you know these are just all different drills that I practice and then there is the results and I've got all the dates and just kind of okay things that I've done and this book is thick <laughs> it's a, that's so important to keep track of progress and keep it in, in existence and everything that's it is and especially the longer you play because I mean or even in this situation with no tournaments around the corner. Right. So well, how do you keep motivated, you know? So right. basically I, I take a log of, of my practice and I keep trying to improve on that day, day by day, week by week, whatever, you know, just, just to kind of keep me motivated. So I'll show you the snooker balls now. We've got the cue ball, then yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, black. Each red ball is worth a point. Uh, the yellow is worth two, green three, brown four, blue five, pink six, and black seven. I'm going to set them up for you and show you what the what the kind of basically you have to take a red first, followed by a choice of any color. If I do red black, that's one plus seven eight. Then I have to go red again, then green, that's nine, that's twelve. Red again, then blue, that's thirteen, that's eighteen, and so on. I try to, to build a run, if you like, a break, we call it, but in, uh, it's a bit like straight pull, you try and do a run, you see how many balls you can run, but you have to do them in the red colour and see how many you can, can run. Now, every time a red ball goes down, it stays down, but every time the coloured balls, I call them coloured balls, every uh -huh. time they get pocketed, they come back and they're replaced on a particular spot. I'll show you the layout it takes. Sure. Here, normally, there's three spots, and then there's what we call a D. It's a semicircle here, where you can begin. You shoot anywhere within, you put a cue ball anywhere within the semicircle to break, break off. So that's basically of a snooker, a snooker table. Of course, normally it's on a, on a 12-foot table. Okay. And what you do is, it's a bit like straight pull, you do a safe break. So you're going to clip off the end, balls, come here, come here, here, before the blue, and try and put it on the top cushion behind the green, what they're trying to do. I can try and demonstrate that, but it's not likely going to work. But the maximum points you can get in snooker is 147, 147. Okay. And that is that every red ball you take you make a black afterwards and who wants it's red black red black with all 15 then you complete the colors in numerical order which is yellow green brown blue pink black so yeah. so the goal is to just like that okay. wow. Neat. and ideally you want to hear 
So then it's, it's a very safe game. So when you play safe, I'm just going to go for it. Oh, wow. That'll do. And then now I play the black, which is very, you know. Ah, miss. <laughs> but basically, um, on this table, these balls are smaller than the Chinese pool balls, by far. You can just see there. And the Chinese, um, okay, so that's a re regular size, like a regular billiards ball, right? Correct. Like, Sorry, the nine ball balls, balls yeah. Right, that's okay. You can see there the size difference. I put it against something dark. So that's basically snooker, but okay. like I said, the, the balls are smaller, the pockets are smaller, um, but the cue that you play with, with uh, to play snooker is normally between nine millimeter, nine mil and 10 mil. Okay. Was that a hard transition for you to, to play with a snooker cue and then play with a pool yeah. cue? Completely, okay. very difficult. It was like, um, now I would explain if I had to play snooker again, it's like trying to shoot with a, a needle or a dart. So it feels, but when it was the other way around, it was like shooting, play with a pool cue, it was like shooting with a broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it just shows you what you get used to. But yes. basically, as you know, we've got a normal size Q-tip of a pool cue is about 12.7513 mil. Right. I play with uh, 11.75. Okay. And then for Chinese pool, listen to this, uh -huh. Chinese pool, they normally play with about a 10 and a half, 10 oh, wow. And then snooker, wow. nine and a half, nine point wow. average. So basically yeah. we go from nine to 13. It's a Chinese pool to American pool. Oh, interesting. Some fun Great. fact. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So, if I, I'll just show you. So, if I put uh, red. Uh huh. Let's pretend that went away. Right. And a black. Well, then the black has to come back out before I continue. So okay. Black, would get put back on the spot, you see? Right, and right. They, that one, the colored ones always come back up then. Correct, so that's eight points right now. Nine. And then... Sixteen points right now. And then you just continue, right? Of course, the, the goal for everybody is to get one, four, seven, which is every red ball with the black. But then you can go basically here and shoot a blue ball or a yeah. Okay. Like for example, right now I've just made red, black, red, black, which is 16, red, pink, 17 plus 6 is 23. I'll continue till I miss. Let's say uh, the maximum points available is 147. So if I make an 80 break or a 90 break, Unfortunately, there's not enough points left for you to be. That if you make a 50 break and I come to the table, there's still 70, 80 points left on the table. And I right. make a, I clear the table, then obviously I win, but I win, you know? So right. it's based on points, yeah. yeah. I feel like if more people understood the rules and you know, they wouldn't be as intimidated and a lot more people would play, you know? It's a great game, yeah. It is. There's just not many tables around. In Here we've got many. I mean, in my snooker club pool hall, I've got six snooker table and how long have you owned your pool room uh three years now and do you have a favorite beer or i do my favorite beer is actually something i began drinking in america which is uh blue moon i like you... blue moon shock top we don't have shock top in the uk uh but we have blue moon now and i love blue <laughs> that's my favorite drink so basically this is what's in my bag um, I have a few, it's all Fury products, obviously, hence the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. um, this is not the, not much of a plug for them. I'm not doing it for a plug for them, but it's just obviously a lot of people are interested in what's in your, actually in your bag. I've got my playing cue. I'm good for all. I've had this for quite some time now. Um, and I play with an Extreme 2 shaft. And this is, uh, you know, nothing special. It's just off the rack. Um, on the tip, I play with a Tiger Sniper, so that's that. And then I've recently, when I say recently, probably within the last six, eight months, I've recently added um, a small mini extension on the end. I feel that just gives me a little bit extra power. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and do you leave the ascension on, or do you just put it on when you need it? No, no, no. I, I play every shot with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it took some getting used to, and I remember all the guys doing it and kind of thinking it was something unnecessary, but once I did practice with it a while, it really actually does give you that little bit extra cue. Yeah. Did you yeah. take weight out of the cue? Did you take any weight out of your regular cue to kind of compensate for the added weight? No? No, I just oh, okay. put it on. Yeah, it's yeah. quite light. It's a very light. Okay. Yeah. Is it carbon fiber? It's hard to tell. Yeah, it's carbon fiber, yeah. Oh, okay. So then I, I've got, it's quite funny because this was a, prototype just what they were giving place till these new ones were made and I've, I've never took it off <laughs> this is my break you um it's the fury apache uh so you have an extender for your break you huh I do, yeah yeah i put a break you uh, uh -huh. again again i noticed some top male players doing it but i just curiosity killed the cat and i just to try it and try it it feels weird when I take it off now, so it's not doing right. anything. But I don't really know if it's helped me or not. <laughs> uh -huh. But anyway, mm -hmm. let's go. so this is my new jump cue. This is the carbon fiber um, new Fury jump cue. It's oh, cool. really awesome uh, for long. That jumps. looks cool too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's really cool actually. And um, you can take this part off here. I've put it on too tight. <laughs> oh, I have. I've put it on too tight. But you can take this part off here, and then that's for shorter jumps. Yeah, I do prefer it for long jumps, though. So that's uh -huh. why that's probably too tight, because I never really take it off. I keep that one for long jumps. Okay. And then this is the version before that, before the carbon fiber. And right. this is great for short jumps. So okay. I do, unfortunately, carry both of them around. And do yeah. they both have phenolic tips and they're a little bit thicker? Yes. The shafts yeah. are a little thicker? Okay. Yeah, the shafts are a little thicker and then they have the uh, the phenolic tips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so tell us your, your craziest pool story. Craziest pool story? Do well, I do have a few. Um, there's one that I'm not so proud of, but it, okay, I'll tell you. It was a snooker tournament, um, something I'm not proud of, but... Basically, I was very young. I was in Europe playing in the European Championship snooker. And the night before, I had too many to drink. And I was only about 18 years old, 19, something like that. Okay. And I'd had, too, I had too many to drink, basically. And my match the next day was at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, sorry, 10 a.m. Sorry, 10 a.m. Okay. And I don't really remember going to bed I think I went about five or six in the morning again it's nothing I'm proud of but um I woke up to my knowledge I woke up at like two in the afternoon and I thought I, I, I oh my god I panicked and I was right, sharing right. with my good old friend my best friend Kim Shaw she was sat there and I'm like Kim Kim I've I've missed my match I said I don't believe it I've, I've missed my match I'll be four oh, feet no. and she's like no, Kelly, you played. <gasps> no way. <laughs> I said, I did. I said, I did. I said, I said, she said, yeah. I said, did I win? She said, yeah, 3 zero. <laughs> I said, no way, no way. And, I, and actually, the, this is a true, true story. I couldn't recall um, playing. I said, who did I play? And she had to show it. She was a new player. And... Um, this was snooker, you know, and she had to show right. me the lady that I played. And, well, you know, and no one could, could they tell that, that you were well, a little that you were butt? Well, <laughs> what happened was, at the time, I was actually 19. At the time, I was the world champion. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh. I just won the world championships and two weeks later flew to uh, Finland, it was. Uh, so I was celebrating that, you see, that's what my, it was the first right, time sure. I won the world championships. So I think I was, that's why I was celebrating. Uh, we flew to Finland for the Europeans, and it was my first match. So I, I definitely use that excuse of celebration for the world. Um, but basically, I just couldn't remember who I played. She that's showed me, Yeah, she showed me the lady, and I'm like, oh, I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> as the days went on, my memory come back a little bit. And right. 
as the world champion. I showed you the break in snooker, didn't I, just then? Yeah, yeah. Right. I was the world champion, and I broke and hit the pink ball first instead of the reds. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, can't, I remember that vaguely, the, the pink ball, and I apparently got off my seat and kind of stumbled. Anyway... Wow. <laughs> Again, nothing for anybody to please do. Please don't try that. But um, I did get a warning from my the British English. Oh, really? Yeah. I, did. That's I a never, good story. never would do that. Again. I never would right. recommend that. For right, right. <laughs> well, that's so, um, what's your? Uh, do you have any pool like like fantasies? Any, uh, like, a d certain dream that you haven't already accomplished or any, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, but, you know, I would love nothing more to win the Chinese 8-Ball or an American 8-Ball world title. And the reason for that is, you know, not trying to brag or sound like that, but I won snooker, I won English billiards, so I... I went on to America, I won nine ball, I've won ten ball, and I've not got an eight ball title. So, oh, okay, yeah. And my other one, which is uh, which is something I would really, really love to do, is uh, get a gold medal at the World Games. I've played twice and I got a bronze medal, um, so I would love to, to go and get a gold medal um, at the World Games. That would be a dream come true too, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And just to clarify to everybody, yeah. it is absolutely no drinking at all. Uh, any, anything else you would like to mention? Well, um, without the support of, of your sponsors, your coach, the fans, my family, my partner, Val, you know, without the support of everybody, it's impossible to do um, to do what we do because we travel so much and, uh, right. you know, when we're not, unfortunately, we're not gold for tennis to where we're in positions um, financially, you know, it's not anyway near um, that, right. finan that financial uh, reward for our matches. So True. we have to keep on traveling and stuff like that, which means a lot of time away. And um, it means without sponsors, that would be tough to do too. So I'd like to thank, you know, thank everybody involved for my career. I mean, there's so many, my parents, God rest them, you know, there's so many, um, people that have helped me and I've been so lucky along the way to meet so many nice people and friends um, you know and again without them who knows where you'd be right right so. right well it was so great to have you and to talk with you and learn more about you and thank you very much for having me and uh, you know Absolutely. I hope it's been fun and thanks to everybody out there for listening and I'll see you on the table soon <laughs> sounds great thanks cool. Kelly thank you Jackie Carroll, Sneaky Pete Mafia, let's make pool great again. See you next time.